Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze, I'm here. It's, uh, what is it? Today's Thursday, so I'm on YouTube. Today's How you doing? <laughs> uh, um, what are we going to do today? I don't know. I'm, we're going to do a little painting today, digital painting. Um, we've been doing some animation over the last couple weeks, and I can show you some of that, show you where that's at. Um, this is a painting that I did um, the last couple days. Uh, I just felt like doing something different, and I did this over on the YouTube, uh, not YouTube, but Facebook Live. Yesterday, I did some work on this, and it was just this little illustration that I wanted to tell a story with. And so, um, so there's that. It was kind of fun. I like kind of jumping around doing different mediums and, you know, animation one day, painting another. And today, I thought what I might do with you guys is, um, it's been a long time since I've done any, um, you know, I make, I like to make Photoshop brushes and I like to make specialty brushes. So I thought today I'd mess around with some of my water specialty brushes and, and, uh, and see what we can come up with. Uh, but I want to show you, I'm kind of excited about it. I want to show you, uh, the animation where we're at with it right now. Um, I've got all the drawings, well, almost all the drawings, and I'm missing about four drawings at the end or five drawings at the end. But we finally got all the drawings done for Snow Bear for this little teaser that we're doing. And um, it's coming out great. And we're really happy with it. And so hopefully next week we'll get it all painted in. And uh, by the end of the week after, probably, we'll have a finished shot that you guys can see. We can share with you. And I want to start using it as a promo for our little short that we're creating. But I'm going to go ahead and press play. Uh, actually, I want to go full screen with it so you guys can see it a little better. And here we go. So now you can see that we've got all those all those ones in there, all those extra drawings. So now everything's nice and smooth. And uh, I'm pretty happy with how everything's moving. And here he goes. He gets the snow on his face. And then boop. And it's just right there at the end. I've just got a couple, a couple of drawings to throw in at the end to, you know, where he slows in. Uh, where we have a couple of little holds in there. I want to get rid of those and, and have drawings. But um, yeah, it feels pretty good. And uh, it's been a lot. Uh, what I've really enjoyed is having you guys along, showing you the process. Um, you know, this is the process. If you can imagine it not being digital and, and, and being on paper instead, you know, this is our process for every film that we made. And, uh, uh, you know, there's not, it's not rocket science. It's, it's, you know, it's something that takes a little bit of experience and you have to, you got to feel and, and over time you get better and better at, but it's, um, it's really gratifying. It's fun to sit down and have an idea and through just a few drawings, or in this case about 270 drawings, um, you can create life on the paper. It's really, uh, it's really, really cool. Uh, and so that's a lot of fun. Let me, uh, I want to show you what it looks like with the background and then, um, you know, then you can imagine, you know, once we get the character colored, He'll be sitting right in that background. I still have to do footprints and finish out the snow and, and the, that sort of thing. But I think it's going to be kind of fun. So that's where this guy is right now. Very happy with that. And so, uh, you know, we're going to have shadows in there and highlights and, and all kinds of fun stuff. But once again, I'm going to keep this animation rough. Uh, we're not going to clean it up any more than what you see. I want to kind of embrace that rough line, which is why the backgrounds are a little bit rough and the character drawings are rough. I like rough animation, and so we're going to we're going to stick with that. But with me today is Dustin, my son Dustin, as always. Come on over, say hi, Dustin. Hi. <laughs> there he is, and Nick, Nick Birch, my business partner, Nick Birch. He's in Sarasota. He's going to be answering questions, and I know I've got somebody out there watching, Vedanta Sprosten. Hello. I'm going to be seeing you later tonight. Flying out tonight to see my lovely lady, Vedanta. Oh, and, I know, <laughs> and I know she's watching. But, um, but we're going we're gonna to have some fun drawing and painting today. So, um, so let's do that. So that's, the, that's Snow Bear. That's where we're at. And uh, let's jump over to Photoshop. So there's that image that I created there. Um, but I want to I do something different. Like I said, I want to do... Uh, just, let's do some water painting. I want to use some of my specialty brushes. And uh, as a matter of fact, Nick, we've got a special going on on the website, creatureartteacher.com on my website. And um, and I mentioned to Nick that I wanted to do I wanted to do some painting with my specialty brushes today. And uh, and so he told me that we can get. And Nick might be able to. Uh, type uh let you guys know more specifically but i think i think there's like 
the the sale is like 50% off. It's a really kind of big slashing sale. But today, for you guys watching, if you if you type in the promo code YouTube Stream, all one word, YouTube Stream, um, it's an extra 10% off. So you can get like 60% off the brushes. And the brush is only five bucks a piece to begin with. So you're paying like a couple bucks. But I want to, um, not that I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm not trying to do a hard sale on you guys. I just wanted you to know that it's there. Uh, but I do want to do this, uh, I want to do, let's do a new image. 20 by 16, I like that size. 20 inches by 16 inches at 300 DPI. And once again, as always, you guys can ask questions and uh, and we'll sit here and I'll, I'll draw and paint and we can talk. So if you guys got anything, let's go. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and fill this in. I always like to start with that gray background or toned background. I like to, it doesn't have to necessarily be gray, but I like it to be toned. And in this case, I want to go a little bit cooler with it because we're going to be painting some water. So I'll let that be my base. My base color is a little bit of a cool, a cool tone. I'm going to go a little deeper with it. There we go. How are we doing, Dustin? Doing pretty good. All right. So one of the things I've got here is I wanted to show you some of these water brushes. I've got, there's about, I've got a set of them up here. There's 24 of them, I believe. And uh, they're a lot of fun. Um, here's, what's really neat about them is, uh, <laughs> might help if I change the color. There we go. Got a question here. Um, this might sound like a strange questioner, but are you a fan of the works of uh, Mauricio An Anton? Mauricio? Mauricio Anton. I don't know that person's work. I'm going to go lighter with this. Um, but I will look him up and uh, and check him out. So here's here's a brush that creates ripples on the water. I love this brush because I, if I use it as highlights, it creates a really nice effect. And so I'm going to use some of these, and I'm going to we're going to create some water. They're, they're a lot of fun. This one's fun. If I go dark with it, if I do make this one darker instead, I'm going to go a little greener with it too. Like we're looking into the water. Look at this one. Say, is the um, is the 300 DPI per centimeter or inch? Inch. DPI stands for dots per inch. Otherwise, it would be DPC, uh, dots per centimeter. So this one's kind of fun. And I can go really big with it. Oops, I put it on my background. Doggone it. I always do that. <laughs> do you have any Oops. tips for setting uh, uh, background scenes and animation? Do I have any tips on... Say that again? Do you have any tips on setting up backgrounds in, uh, in animation? Well... The biggest thing is you need to be aware when you're setting up your background for animation, uh, you need to be aware of where the animation is going to go. So you don't want kind of weird tangents with background elements and that sort of thing. You also want to know, you know, you want to make sure that your, your ground plane um, is set. Your animation is going to match the ground plane. So you got to make that very clear. And you just have to be aware of where that the action is going to be and you compose according to that action. You know, a background can look really beautiful on its own, but it might, might not work for the animation that needs to work within it. And a lot of times, when you don't have the animation in a background, the background itself seems very empty and it needs the animation. So the biggest thing to remember is anticipate the animation that's going to be in there as part of your uh, design of the background, okay? So once again, I want to show you this brush because it's a, I think it's really cool. And I'm, once again, I'm going the wrong color. Uh, did you ever get a chance to meet and or work with um, the nine old, the nine old men of Disney? Yes, I've met I met Frank Thomas, Ollie Johnson, Ward Kimball. Uh, I met a lot of them. Uh, never met I never met Milt Call. Uh, he passed away before I came into the industry. Uh, um, but yeah, I met I met quite a few, and uh, and it was great. It was, it was an honor. Ward, you know, Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnson. They actually came into our studio several times. Uh, and so I met them, you know, quite a few times. Um, I actually have two uh, related questions. Sure. Uh, the first one is, should I get the uh, animal drawing bundle and get proficient in drawing animals before buying the wildlife bundle? And um, uh, what tutorial um, do you recommend first on, the, on your website? Well, it depends on what you want to do. I mean, I've got all kinds of stuff. I've got animation. I've got 
figure drawing. I've got character design. I've got animal drawing. They're all kind of different things. Um, I would recommend getting, you know, if you want to specialize in some kind of animal drawing right now, all I've got for specialized animal drawing are horses, bears, big cats, um, horses, bears, and big cats. I think that's it. Am I missing something? I think I'm horses, bears, and big cats. Yeah, we still need to work. I think that's we're it. still working on the dog one. Yeah, I've got, I'm going to be working on a dog one coming up. Yeah, uh, also asking for mooses. <laughs> mooses, yeah. We've that for the past few weeks. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm going to sketch real quick. I'm, I'm going to imagine like we're in an ocean. Oh, so let me finish answering the question. Um, you know, it really depends on what you're looking for. Um, I definitely would recommend getting into the animal anatomy stuff in my other courses before getting into the animal painting, just so you have a place to start. Um, you'll have a, you know, because you'll start to see that, you know, between bears, horses, and big cats, there's, there's similarities in the anatomy and you can start to utilize that. So one of the things I want to do in this image is I'm going to, I'm going to go dark with it and I want to put the camera down in the waves and I'd like to, maybe we'll do like a little sea monster kind of thing, but I'm just going to, I'm going to go very loose with it at, fir at first. Do you like Don Bluth's movies, and uh, what's your favorite? I think Don Bluth. Blah, blah, blah. I think Don Bluth movies are good. Yes, um, you know I like the Fievel films. I really like them a lot. Oh, those are great. And I want I want to have it tilted a little bit, like we're in a wave. So I'm going to go kind of big with this. I'm just going to solidly paint this in. There we go. Going really loose with this. And you can do this with any brush. I'm just happen to use this brush. How do you start learning uh, animal anatomy? Do you work yourself through the different body parts? Yes, when I started learning, it really just, I, I started, uh, you know, drawing from life when I could. Uh, but then I would study anatomy. Right now, you know, I, I did all this before there was internet. You know, with the advent of the internet, there's all kinds of stuff you can you can take advantage of now. And uh, actually, I want to lighten that up. I want it to be more of a mid-tone. Uh, so I'm going to go to hue, saturation. Let's lighten that. And let's saturate it a little bit more. There we go. Let's change the hue there we go, just a little bit. See, I love being having this ability to, to do this. And right now I've got a very repetitious one, two, three. It looks like spines on the back of a dragon. I don't want that in the silhouette. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to rework that a little bit. Speaking of dragons, we need to make a, we should make a dragon video at some point in the future. Actually, we should. That's a good idea. Uh, is math important in any way for animation? You know, math is, you know, not in the sense that you're probably thinking, but, I mean, we use a lot of math in the way that we break up uh, our, our timing. And uh, I've got Ronnie Williford calling me on the phone. Ronnie, you know, we got a course from Ronnie Williford on our, uh, on our website where he talks about color. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer the phone. Hey, Ronnie Williford. I'm good. We're actually, we're, we are live on YouTube right now and I'm talking to everybody and I told them I was going to answer the phone. So you're talking to the whole world right now. You should put yourself up, put him on speaker. <laughs> he goes, he says, he, he says, hello, whole world. <laughs> put, put him on speaker. Oh yeah. I got to put you on speaker. Hold on. There you go. You're on speaker now. Awesome. That's so nice. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Uh, hello to everybody in the world. That's, um, I'm happy to talk to them. <laughs> Hi, Ronnie. Ron, uh, Dustin just Hi, said hello. Nice to, nice to hear from you, too. <laughs> Good to hear from you as well. So um, I will call you back after the live stream. I'm assuming you're calling about uh, uh, Achilles. Yes. Uh, uh, there's no pressure. Uh, give me a holler whenever you're done. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks so much. Yep, Bye. Now. bye. I figured, hey, what the heck, why not? <laughs> so we said hello person on the phone <laughs> <laughs> all right so i've got this silhouette and so what's kind of fun about this i'm going to uh, i'm going to lighten it up just a little bit more by the way that oval painting uh paintbrush you're you're using uh can they act 
uh, access that? Uh, that one I don't have. Th that was a brush that a friend of mine gave me, and I can't really resell it because he gave it to me. But I do have brushes uh, that are similar. Um, uh, so I can show you those. But that's... that's uh, and I can show you how to make brushes, too. And uh, I've got... Actually, I, I, one of my other live streams, I showed you... I showed the audience how to do that. So if you go back, I think it's like two or three live streams back, you'll actually see how to, how to make brushes. So what I can do is I can lock this layer now. And one of the things I want to do is I'm going to come in very lightly. I'm going to go in with a light value. And I'm going to grab... I'm going to grab this, this first water brush. These are... These are on the site. There we go. How do you approach making up an animal and drawing it? You know, I, I use a lot of my own. Let me redo that. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna knock this back. I use a lot of my anatomy knowledge. There we go. See what I'm trying to do real real quick? Let's create like we're in the waves. And bring that blow this way up really big. There we go. See that already? That starts to feel like we're we've got some water. It's kind of cool. Um, I'm going to double this up. But as far as creating your own animals, it really helps to start with real world knowledge first. And so study real world anatomy, and um, uh, and that will give you a leg up on how to design. You'll start to understand. The physiology and the physics of how you know how we're put together, how other animals are put together, and you can start to apply that to your own creature design if that's what you're asking. Um, there's some great books out there. Two of the best are by Terrell Whitlatch. Uh, Nick can give you the the um, the, uh, the the website for him, but they, she's incredible creature designer, but with an amazing background knowledge in biology. Matter of fact, I think. These are great books by Terrell Whitlatch. Did you change the screen, Dustin? Yep. Good. Yeah, we, we wanted to test out our new screen. So these are, this one is uh, The Science of Creature Design, Understanding Animal Anatomy. And you can see the stuff that she's done. And yes, that looks like something from Avatar. Well, that's because she worked on Avatar. And here's another one. The Principles of Creature Design. And one of the things I've, uh, that I had the honor of is on the science of creature design. Um, let's see here. Man, these are nice drawings. She's so, so good. Um, I had the honor of actually writing the foreword. So um, I've worked with Terrell for years and years. And... Um, these books are fantastic, and uh, they should be a staple in anybody's, you know, any young creature designer's library. So it's the science of creature design and the principles of creature design, and they are by Terrell Whitlatch. There, there's her name. Terrell Whitlatch. She's amazing. Okay? So there's your answer. And the, in fact, the Star Wars book they mentioned of, uh, she did all, she did the whole entire book on that, right? The, yeah. The, the creatures of How do I go back, Dustin? Uh, go to scene. Scene. It doesn't. It doesn't. Oh, like we need to make a separate. Oh, sorry. We're doing the intro now. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> um, just stop by for one quick question. Uh, when it comes to animating big cats like tigers or leopards, how do you keep the spots or stripes consistent and in place when they're moving? <laughs> well, first of all, when you design it, make sure that you're not making them too complicated. It's just, you guys got to track them. You got to find points on the body that you can relate to, to, to kind of anchor your markings. It's really hard. It's just, there's no easy way around it. So, I mean, that's, that's the best answer I can give you. Um, so yeah, there's that. <laughs> 
So I'm going to go in here now. I'm going to go a little greener. And I'm going to set this layer to multiply. Actually, I might... Let me see here. I'm going to try something different. I'm going to, I'm going to stay on this layer because I like that it's locked. But I'm going to go to my blend mode and change that to multiply. We'll just see how it goes. I'm going to knock the opacity way down. And I want to go into this brush right here. And let's get... A, I'm going to start in the foreground. Get that brush really big. Hold on one second, Dustin. My bad. Oh, that's good. Now look what happens. I'm going to go a little bit darker with it. Maybe a little smaller. And what I can do is I can go into these shadow areas, the dark areas of the waves here. This is what I love about making these specialty brushes. There we go. Just makes it look so easy. Well, if you take your time, there, if I take my time and I'm constantly changing the size. Now these are on my website at Creature Art Teacher and they, they really come in handy for making convincing water. I mean, we've already got, you know, fairly good rendering of the waves right here and we really haven't, we've only been on it. For a few minutes i've been talking mostly well there's a lot of questions flowing yeah there we go and speaking of uh, i'm gonna go a little darker in here go ahead uh do you have a tutorial for color and light or uh, color team uh, we do have a course on color uh, taking control of color by ronnie williford who is just on the phone with me um other than that we we're gonna have more color courses coming up so here's a rough kind of thing we got going. I want to go in, I'm going to unlock it, and I'm going to go in with my eraser, and I want to go in with one of my rougher brushes. Let's see this one here. Let's just see what it looks like. I'll blow that up. Would you recommend uh, George Bridgman's uh, To Learn Human Anatomy? Yes, very much. Bridgman's fantastic was <laughs> so what I want to do is I want to kind of break up the edges uh, get a little break up these edges just a little bit like at the peaks there we go that feels pretty good now I'm going to come back in the sky and let's get a little gradient in the sky let's go a little warmer I'm going to grab that color I'm going to go down a little warmer as we get towards the horizon it tends to get warmer and I'm going to go a little brighter with it There we go. What size uh, paper did you guys use at Disney? Um, it's, it's a little bigger than 11 by 17. That's where that's 16 field paper. Um, let me knock back that back a little bit. Uh, but we also use for smaller scenes, we use what's called 12, 12 field paper. And, uh, uh, and that worked really well as well. So, uh, but we didn't, we didn't do it as much. Most of the time on our, on our, uh, on the features, everything was 16 field paper. So it was 11 by 17-ish. Matter of fact, once again, I'm going to show you. I'm going to get up from my desk. Don't yeah. switch the camera, Dustin. Don't switch it? Don't switch it. Oh, because of the intro. Yeah. Uh. Here's the paper right here. Can you see? Let me, let me switch over to the... So I can see if you can see. Yeah. So this is the size of the paper. Here's the pegs. So you can see the pegs, the holes. And uh, that's the size right there. So here I've got um, a start in the water, which is kind of fun. I want it, I want it to feel like there's, a, there's light coming up, uh, coming from back here. <clears throat> so it feels like we're kind of in the rolling waves. I, I remember when I, when I was a kid, when I was 14, I was lost at sea. My brother and my stepfather and I, we were lost at sea for three days. And I remember being in those rolling waves and I've, I'll never forget that. And I, and that's, it's a, it's a, it's a cool feeling, you know, to be down in there like that. It's not cool to be lost at sea for three days, but otherwise it was cool. Um, let me come back to here. Cause I wanted, I wanted, 
create another layer between behind. And I just want to see if I can create a little bit lighter value, maybe a little grayed out, maybe a little warmer, because I want to put it in the background. Once again, I'm going to go to my brush here. I just want to see what that might look like. Got to knock that opacity all the way up. And what's that paper called? Oh, paper I have my have it set to multiply. Sorry. Let me redo this. Say that again, Dustin. Um, the paper that you showed them. What was that paper called? That was my animation paper. That was just straight up Disney animation paper. I have very little of it left. But you can get similar paper uh, through any uh, through any of the animation uh, supply chains. Can you tell us a bit of that Lost at Sea story? Ah, I don't like that. I'm going to drop that back. Uh, sure. Um, you know, when I was, this is 1982. In the summer of 1982, long before some of you were born, <laughs> um, my brother and my stepfather and I decided to go out fishing for the day. And uh, we had a little 17 foot open bow fishing boat. And uh, there we go. I just want a little bit, maybe a little peak of a wave back there. That's all I need. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. And um, this is out of the Gulf of Mexico in South Florida. And uh, so we went out to go fishing for the day. And, you know, we, we were pretty poor. And um, uh, so we didn't have a, we didn't have a lot of, of good equipment, putting it mildly. And, uh, and so when we, we went out way beyond the sight of land, we went out about 60 miles and uh, in this little 17 foot, foot boat. And so when it came time to come back, our compass was all messed up. And so we came back in the wrong direction. And we went south instead of going west, or east, sorry, instead of going east back towards land. We went south towards Cuba. And, uh, uh, and we didn't realize it. And so we kept going and kept going and kept going until finally we realized, you know what, we're not getting any closer. We still don't see land and the sun's low, getting low. And so um, we decided to tie up to an anchor because, or tie up to a crab trap because our anchor wasn't holding. And we just decided to sleep for the night and see what would happen. Uh, and follow the sun. We wanted to wake up the next morning. And when the sun came up, we would follow the sun because we knew that would be east. And so we did. We slept through the night and t tossing and turning and all that. And, uh, and the next morning, the sun came up and we got our boat going and headed into the sunrise. And within five minutes, ten minutes, we were able to see land. And then almost immediately, we ran out of gas. <laughs> so we were still 20 miles out in the ocean, but we were out of gas and we were adrift. And... Uh, so then we had a sail. I mean, this goes on and on and on. I could tell this story for six hours. We set up the sail, but we were blowing sideways. And so I had to get into the water, uh, put a rope in the, on the bow and put a rope over my shoulder and swim to keep the boat going straight so we could sail with the wind uh, instead of plowing sideways. And I did that for a couple of hours uh, until uh, some sharks came. And so then I got pulled out of the water and we're in like mid into the second day and uh at this point we didn't have anything else to do so we threw our our fishing lines into the water because we were running out of food and we figured we should get as much fish as we could and so we ended up catching a big a big shark and brought that into the boat and i cleaned cleaned it and uh uh and then we just fell back to sleep all we could do is just we couldn't go back in the water so we just drifted uh until i woke up with a big epiphany and realized that our, our, our gas tanks, we had external gas tanks. I realized that when you run out of gas, you still have a little bit left in the bottom. And we had five of them. So I decided to punch holes in four of the tanks and drain them into one. So we got a little bit of gas and we were able to start again. And we got within about a half a mile ashore and we ran out of gas again. But then we realized we had gone so far south, we were down in the Everglades and we were 40 miles from any city or any people. Um, and then we got stranded on the beach and that went on for another day. And just the story goes on and on and on. It's a, a big adventure. My brother actually wrote a, um, my brother wrote a script <laughs> about our big adventure and, uh, maybe we'll share it someday, but it was, it was something else. So that's my little, my little lost at sea story that someday maybe you'll hear the whole thing. 
So here I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna lock that out. And I'm gonna add a little bit more texture like we did on these waves. There we go. So now already, you know, I've been talking a lot, but you can see we've got a, some kind of some cool stuff going, which is kind of neat. I like that. All right. So I wanna let's just I'm gonna think about how I can use some blend modes and just keep using these brushes and get some cool effects. I'm going to experiment. Why don't we just experiment together? So, um, uh, I want I want there to be like a I want the light to be like the sun just off off the top of the frame. I want the sun to be up there. You're awfully quiet over there, Dustin. Is we got? Oh, any... you're you're going off on the story. <laughs> Do we have any other questions? Um, Sorry, guys. I didn't mean to dominate everything there. <laughs> well, somebody was saying uh, earlier you probably needed. A, you're probably thinking you needed needed a bigger boat huh <laughs> no we just needed a better boat <laughs> so here i want to i want to um somebody's asking uh i signed up uh, to your newsletter how do i get that brush you use oh uh nick that's a nick question you should you should have access to it nick come with me up nick <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to try something here i'm going to put a layer over the top well, and because a, I've got this light right here, I'm going to try something. I'm going to I'm going to set it to overlay, and I'm going to come up to my my gradient tool, and I'm going to go to this this gradient, whatever you call it. That's the let's see if it gives me a, a reflected gradient. We're going to do that, and I'm going to try going right under the light and go sideways with it. Just see what it does. That's kind of interesting. Go ahead, Dustin. Sorry. Uh, will you be the director of a Disney movie in, tw in, in the year 2021? No. Is that something that's on IMDb? Uh, maybe. I'm not there sure. might be something on IMDb. Uh, there's always something on IMDb that's wrong. Well, didn't they, like, mistaken you for a different per? Well, it wasn't um, IMDb, but it was... Um, there we go. That's kind of cool. It was like the, Os the Oscars something kept on... Um, Mistaking, mistaking you for somebody else? Um, I don't know. Maybe. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in. I just want to experiment with this. I, actually, I want to... You should do a live stream just to tell, tell these stories. I got hooked. <laughs> <laughs> so what I want to do is um, I've got this nice light coming down. So it's like, so it's like the, the there's light, you know, over... The sun right there. <laughs> I can't. I'm trying to. I'm trying to do like five different things in my brain. I can't speak. So I want to come in here and I'm going to grab an eraser. I'm going to use the airbrush eraser, the airbrush brush for the eraser. And I want to come in and just kind of clean up. Whoops. That's what I want. I got it. I just grab the regular brush. I want the airbrush eraser. There we go. I just want to, like, when you think about water. And the way light works on water, as the plane of the water is going to, if the light is, if the light's back here, as the, as the plane comes down this way, it's going to see less light. So the planes that are more facing us will see less light. So I'm going to darken those. I'm going to erase away some of that light. Like so. Oops. Everybody started asking, like, why is he called Cowboy Bebop? <laughs> <laughs> Cowboy Bebop. It's an inside joke. <laughs> Dustin got hooked on... Dustin loves Cowboy Bebop. And all yeah. he was doing yesterday was talking about Cowboy Bebop. Well, it wasn't just yesterday. It's been going on for, like, the past couple weeks. Every time somebody asks about anime, like, well, my number one favorite is Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> and Nick cracked a joke about it. So ever since then, I'm like, all right. That would be Bob. <laughs> Cup of be Bob. So I'm just coming in and kind of erasing away. <clears throat> uh, have you ever worked with uh, Eric Goldberg? Oh, yes. I've worked with Eric Goldberg many times. Um, when I worked on Pocahontas, Eric was the director, one of the directors. And then when I worked on Aladdin, obviously he did the genie. I did Raja, so we worked on the same film there. But, uh, and we, we recently did a lecture together out in, uh, in Nashville last year, or two years ago, actually. I think it's been now. But, uh, yes, I know Eric very well. He's a great guy. An amazing, amazing artist and animator. 
Uh, any advice for color choosing and background making? Uh, that's a broad question. Um, yeah, I mean, when you're doing backgrounds, I was giving some advice earlier. If you're doing backgrounds for animation, you want to make sure that your backgrounds are, you've got to plan the animation for the animation ahead of time so that all the, the compositions work. So here, uh, just real quick, I'm not going to, I'm not forgetting your, your question, but I want to show you, I'm coming in and erasing away kind of the dark areas of where the, I want the water to be. And you can see now we're starting to see the planes a little bit. Doing the same thing back here. There we go. And I'm going to show you something else when I, in just a second, what I'm going to do. But, um, but you know, the other thing too about color, I mean, I could, color is a whole other, that's a whole other lecture. Color goes on and on and on. One of the things I, I try to always make sure is that I'm working, I work with analogous colors, which are colors that are close together against complements as well. So my war, I, I make sure I'm using warms and cools, analogous and complements, and that kind of all works for me. It's hard to explain any, any deeper than that without getting into an entire uh, lecture on color. Maybe I'll do that one of these days. But I do recommend, if you're interested in that stuff, not to keep selling the website, but um, I'm going to. Uh, Ronnie Williford, who was just on the phone with us, uh, knows color better than anybody I know. And he has created uh, a course for us called Taking Control of Color. And it's on the website. And, uh, and so he talks about, you know, the, the academics of color and, and all of that, but then he does three demos where he's putting it to use, putting it to action, which is really useful. So here, um, we're getting kind of a nice effect there. That feels pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here with the same, there we go. I'm going to I'm just grab the, 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 the airbrush and I'm going to give it the pressure sensitivity. And now I want to come back in and just selectively hit and knock that opacity down. Are you going to direct a film like Brother Bear? Am I going to? I probably won't direct another film like Brother Bear because I've already done one. That was Brother Bear. Um, I don't like to repeat myself, although I'm, <laughs> I'm doing Snow Bear. <laughs> But, um, but it's going to be different. Uh, but I, you know, right now there's no plans in the works for me directing from a feature standpoint, um, anything, but, uh, who knows what the future holds. Have you seen, um, uh, the anime movies that, uh, Akira and Ghost in the Shell, correct? Who, me? Yeah. Yeah, you know that. You know I have. Yeah. And you like them, right? Yeah. Does that give you validation? I loved them. I love uh, Studio Ghibli and everything that comes out of there. It's just fantastic. So you can see what I'm doing here is I'm taking the planes that I've established with those brushes and I'm emphasizing some of them to give it a little bit more random feel and I want to give it a better sense of light. And so here, because this plane is leaning more towards the source of light, we're going to get more highlights coming off of those, some of these textures, water textures. There we go. How long have you been drawing for? Uh, that's my favorite question because I have, a can I have a canned answer. I've been drawing since Jimi Hendrix was alive and the Beatles were still a band. <laughs> <laughs> Simple enough. Yeah, so I started drawing, I was born in 1968 and I was started drawing probably about the age of two. So about 1970, I started drawing. What is your advice for combining animal anatomy for creature design? Well, um, well, that, first of all, that is, that is my advice. When people ask about creature design, I really have them look at real world anatomy because I think that's important. Um, so that's that. Um, and then, you know, try to stick Think about the reality of what it is that you're designing. And um, as far as what 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 niche do they fill in from an environmental standpoint? Because it's the environment that shapes the creature. And so if you want your creatures to be believable, think about a believable environment and how they may have adapted to fill that environment. 
Uh, any advice on getting a job at Disney or how to stand out in the applicant pool? <clears throat> well, that's, yeah, I mean, the best thing, you just have to put forward the best work you have. Just know that everybody's great. Everybody that applies at Disney, Disney takes only the best. And you got to know there's a million other people that want to work at Disney. Um, my best advice about applying at Disney is maybe set your sights out on, you know, Disney's not the end all. There's a lot of other places that are great as well. And, um, you know, have a backup plan as well. Because uh, not everyone's going to get a job at Disney. And uh, it's tough. It's really tough. So I'm just going in here and hitting some of those, some of those highlights. Um, I'm just going to get that a little brighter. You can see I'm hitting some of these a little bit brighter. Uh, do you have any advice for a colorblind person uh, trying to do some art with colors? Well, it depends on the color blindness that you have. It's, I'm assuming it might be, it's probably red green because that's the most common. Um, you know, I don't have a lot of experience. My brother is red green colorblind and he could help you. Um, I know he's struggled. He has struggled with it a lot. Um, but I also know new colorblind artists that um, it kind of freed them a little bit and they didn't worry about uh, exact color as much as they worried about value. And if you can get your values right, meaning your light and dark, um, you can have a lot of fun with the color and, uh, and create some really interesting stuff. Uh, what is the best way to better my skills as a beginner with Photoshop? Um, just get in there and use it every day. The only way I got better with Photoshop is uh, by using it every day. I used it all the time. And the reason I say, <clears throat> so I say every day is because, you know, even if you walk away from it for, you know, two, three, four days, you start to forget what you, what you learned and, um, and you want to keep that fresh. So you can see I'm going in and hitting some of these waves right here. There we go. All just by using those those brushes, those water brushes, and I, I've got a lot of different uh, uh, like water traits, different ripples that um, uh, I've made with the brushes. And I can show you some of those. But, really odd question. Sure. But do you ever get bored of drawing since you can draw pretty much anything now and it'll look amazing? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I love drawing. I will never get bored of it. That's funny. So here I'm trying to think about the logic. I'm thinking about the planes, thinking about that logic of how that water is reflecting back the sunlight, where that plane is against the sunlight. I might catch a little bit of it. You know, I'm going to catch less and less as I get away from the main source of light. There we go. And that's because this plane is kind of turning towards the light. I'm going to add a little bit of light in here, reflecting back. Do you have any advice for someone outside the USA trying to get a job in an animation studio over there? Uh, getting a getting a job at another animation studio outside the US? Is I think, uh, no, somebody... Uh, or uh, wanting to come into the, the US. US that's from the outside. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. As far as I mean, everyone's seen in the news. I don't know what the immigration laws are now. And I do know that if you want to come into the United States into animation, you need to be they need to show that that person that somebody in the United States can't fill the spot. And um it's I don't you know, I don't know. Yeah. It's just it's a it's a tough it's a tough one. It's kind of the similar way um up in uh, uh, up in Canada, like for two years, I had to travel up to Canada uh, because the company I was working with moved their business up there. And in order to work with them, I had to get a work visa right out right out the gates. And I actually had to give a full resume and even a full application. It was almost like as I was. Um, interviewing for a job and it was right it was inside the airport whoops and um, 
so it's, that's kind of the whole premise is uh, just making sure they have um, a resume, letter of recommendation uh, from your uh, from the company that's hiring you, and um, and uh, make sure you answer the questions uh, properly, and you'll pretty much be golden. Stay golden, pony boy. Stay golden. So I'm, I'm adding a little bit of darkness here. Just wanted to see. Do you nowadays still draw on the wrong layer? Oh, of course I do. <laughs> we, we all do that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I still do that. So I'm going to come up on here. I'm going to do another overlay. And you'll see, I'm, right now I'm just experimenting. Um, you'll see I, I, I added that, the gradient on the bottom to darken it. I set it to multiply. Well, I'm going to come up in here and I'm going to grab this nice bright yellow again. And I'm going to my gradient tool and I'm going to do the reflecting gradient again. And I'm just going to put a new layer on top of that and see what it does. Uh, that's not too bad. Let's uh, go a little wider with it. What's your opinion on the biggest differences between Disney's work and, uh, and uh, Japanese anime like Hayao Miyazaki? Uh, well, first of all, there's the, it's the number of drawings per second. You know, Miyazaki does he does a lot of fours and sixes, uh, whereas Disney does a lot of twos and ones. Um, and the style, the the storytelling style is completely different. Um, there's a, there's a different sensibility. I'm going to knock this back. So uh, I mean, there's there's a lot of differences. Uh, but I mean, that, that's what I like about about both is that it, it gives variety. I want to give, let's see, let's see what happens if I give that just a little bit of, just a little of color. See what that does. That's not too bad. It's kind of interesting. And one of my favorite things about Hayao Miyazaki is the way that um, he shows emotion through the characters. Yeah. Like, especially through the hair. Because if, because a lot of times it feels like, um, like an animal, almost like animalistic, where like when you see somebody getting angry, like their the hair would actually start flaring up, uh -huh. like li it's little details like that that shows that extra emotion to it. Yeah, I always thought that was always a fascinating thing for me. So I'm going to go in now, and once again with just with a little standard brush, and I'm going to I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to set it to. Uh, let's see. I'm going to leave it at normal. I just want to see something. I want to go really kind of bright with my light here. I'm going to create really bright highlights. Any advice for drawing at the zoo uh, since animals move a lot? Yeah, you know, the, the biggest thing I can tell you as far as when you're drawing animals is, you know, study up ahead of time. You, you know, if you know the animals you're going to be drawing, um, try to... Try to prepare yourself and, and study some of the anatomy before you go. Um, because a lot of times when you're drawing, especially when they're moving, um, you're just going to catch an impression and you got to get it down really fast. Um, the other thing, too, that animals will do at the zoo, uh, if you're, if, depending on where, you know, what animal you're looking at, um, even though they're moving, they tend to re repeat themselves. They'll pace back and forth. And so you can find a pose that will repeat itself, you know, as it passes by, boom, there it is. It's going to come back. It's going to pass again. Boom. And so you'll get little snippets, you know, over and over of the same pose. And you can utilize that. Another technique that I use when I'm drawing animals is um, I do, I take pictures with my brain. And the way I do that is as the animal's walking by, I'll close my eyes and look away really fast. Close my eyes and look away. And what that does is it leaves a flash on my brain of the last image that I saw. And then I sketch it as fast as I can, and then I'll do the same thing as it walks by in the same pose. So that helps as well. So what I'm doing now is I'm going a little bit brighter, and I'm catching the areas that are going to be reflecting light. The back side, that back plane is reflecting the sun back here. And I want it to be kind of a hazy light. You can see that we're going kind of hazy with it. Well, what do you think about the... Um animator chuck jones chuck jones is great he created some of the best animation we've ever seen he created my childhood warner brothers and bugs bunny and daffy duck and 
Wiley Coyote and all that. Yeah. Fantastic. That was my childhood, as well as I'm sure some of yours. So here I'm just hitting a few. You can see now we're starting to get this water is starting to turn away from us because I'm defining the planes through the reflections. And as we come down, as we as the plane of that big wave kind of turns towards us a little bit, it's going to be catching less and less of the really bright reflections. Some of the smaller waves won't catch it, so I'm just I'm just saving it for some of the bigger ripples like that but as it turns over you're going to see more and more up here uh, we do a video on how to do uh, layouts for animation uh sure i'm not the best guy for it uh i wasn't a layout artist but i can i can give you my knowledge for sure and uh uh what i think about when i'm working out my layouts for my like for for snow bear and, and I'm pretty sure we can um, bring somebody in to do a uh, um, future project uh, who specializes with that. Sure. So here I'm just hitting. There we go. So you can see now we're, we're starting to get a nice feel for it. I'm going to go even smaller, blow this up. Go back here and hit some of this. You can see it starts to blend right in with the sky. Was it hard getting started as a uh, 2D animator? Uh, sure. I mean, it took a lot of work. I, I busted my butt when I was in college uh, to become an illustrator. At the time, when I when I came through, you know, uh, animation wasn't what it is now. There, there wasn't much of an animation industry. There, um, it was kind of dying. And um, and Disney was trying to get back on its feet again. And, um, and so I wanted to be an illustrator, but I, I was open to other ideas. And so, uh, that's when I decided to interview with Disney. I didn't know what to expect, but I really busted my butt trying to get a good portfolio together. And, uh, and so, whoops, get rid of that. And so, yeah, the work put in, you know, paid off. I, I put a lot of work in trying to get that together and um and it paid off i ended up getting an internship and uh that internship led to a job and and here i am 30 years later you know working in animation but also because i was an illustrator uh i, I you know i, I can i've continued with my painting as well so i feel like i've had the best of both worlds where i you know i can i can animate but i can paint as well and, and have a lot of fun doing that i've been very lucky uh do you ever noodle I'm noodling right now. <laughs> I'm noodling with these little reflections. <laughs> yes, I get stuck noodling just like everyone else that does every once in a while. But here I'm, I'm going to try to uh, not noodle so much. But what I'm trying to do is I just wanted to show you guys how using these brushes, it can get a nice foundation of texture. I mean, we theoretically, I mean, realistically, I've only been working on this for a few minutes, you know, considering I've been talking so much. But that you know these brushes really kind of lay in nice, some nice textures. I'm just going in and hitting some highlights. I shrink that up. It starts to feel, start to feel like we're out in the, out, in the, out in the seas, getting tossed about. Have you ever left a Easter egg in uh, some of your work at Disney? Um, a little bit. I mean, the Easter eggs are like leaving, like what we do with. There's like su surprises, right? That's yeah, what an Easter um, egg is. Yeah. Like, Sorry, I'm an uh, old. Like, Easter egg is like something. Like our character, like our caricatures, and yeah. Yeah, like. Yeah, I mean, when in, in Aladdin, when Raja turns back into an adult tiger, because he's you know Jafar turned him into a into a cub, um, I turned him into Mickey for two frames. Before he turns into the actual adult Raja, you know things like that. We did. We always did caricatures of each other. Who's your favorite director? Um, for animation, or uh, I'm, I'm assuming I'm assuming you mean just in general. Yeah. I really love the Coen Brothers as, as a team. Um, you know, The Big Lebowski and Oh Brother Where Art Thou, and you know all the other films they've done. Oh Brother, 
Oh, brother. Um, I think they're brilliant. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I like James Cameron. I like, I know he's a hothead, but uh, boy, he puts out quality. Um, when I'm drawing in public, many people start watching me. How can I tell them to go away without being rude? Uh, do you ever? Sorry, dude. That that's rude to begin with. You don't. If you're gonna if you're gonna draw in public, just accept the fact people are gonna look at you. And you know what? People people are fascinated by what you do. And you know you should you should embrace it. You know don't don't be put off by it. Embrace it. You know people want to see what you're doing. They want to they want to talk to you. They 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 think it's cool. I mean you're inspiring people. So don't tell them to go away. You know, embrace it and have some fun. You know, I love when people come up and they want to talk to me. And, you know, I love talking with people. And, you know, if I'm going to be in public, that's, that's, that goes, that goes with drawing in public, man. You know, if you're going to be out there, you got to accept the fact that people are going to be looking at what you're doing. That just comes with it. When you're drawing in uh, painting lions, why do you add uh, spots on them? Why do I add spots on, on lions? Yeah. Because lions have spots. Not all of them do, but most, even adults, they have, they have some spots down towards the bottom of their legs. They have, they have spotted markings. Let me see if I can pull some up here. By the way, uh, is this illustration going to be used for anything in particular? And did you finish the snow bear animation? Uh, I showed the animation early on. You must have come in late. Yeah. Um, let me see here. All photos. Let me show you here. This is nope. Those aren't the lions I'm looking. Those aren't the lions I'm looking for. What is this? I don't know what this is. Photos. Let's come up here. There we go. Sorry about that. There they are. <laughs> I didn't know what I was looking at. Found them. But um, uh, I'm gonna come through here see if I can find uh, because like I said, some of them have spots, some of them don't. But here, here's a uh almost an adult and you can see the spots down on the belly that's what i'm talking about and i'll put that in there on some of them uh as the males as, as the as the animals get older as the cats get older they don't uh the spots will fade but a lot of times they're still there um these are these are frame grabs that i've, I've taken off of uh, big cats i love pulling frame grabs for, uh, for future reference yeah there's some really cool stuff in here But you know when they're when when lions are young, they've got a lot of spots on them and little stripes, and and as they grow older, those spots will fade. But you know a lot of times they'll stay on, you know, even into young adulthood. And so that's where I I tend to you know keep those on the cat. And uh, plus, I think they look cool. <laughs> nice. So here you can see just the faint you know faint spots on here. If it was a better photo, you'd be able to see them a little better. But you can see these are three young males. Br they're brothers. Their, their mane is still light in color. Um, I've come across males like this in Africa, and they they look like these golden lions. They're really beautiful. Looks like my mane. Yeah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. So I'm just painting this in still. I have a 16-year-old son that has uh, creative ideas, but uses linear art, uh, uh, that uses a uh, linear art. Traditional art classes are tough for him. Uh, got him your uh, your annual subscription. Are there any specific courses he should start with? I'm not sure. I know what you mean by linear art. I don't know. I don't. I'm not following what that is. Um, but it really depends on what he wants to do. I mean, the biggest thing. He's only 16, so let you know. If, just kind of let him explore. And um, the worst thing you can do with a young artist is you know put constraints on them especially when they're really young you know let them let them explore and, and see what they want to do try different things try figurative work um uh the one of the things i always recommend is try to get away from the anime if they're doing a lot of anime because it's anime is great but you, you're not gonna there's a lot more out there and so my big recommendation is to try other things you can always come back to it but try other things is there a caricature of you anywhere in any of the uh, Disney movies? 
Not really. Um, there's a little bit in Brother Bear during the funeral procession after Sitka is killed. Um, I'm down in the funeral procession, but it's so tiny you can't really see me. But um, not really. No. No. <laughs> like maybe not really. No. no. Maybe not. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like that, that downhill motion. So here I'm just, just hitting some of these little reflections here. You can see, giving it some form. What time is it? Oh, we've been at it for an hour. But you can see how convincing you can create some really fun water shapes here. Is the story of Tembo the elephant popular at all? Uh, Damon Albarn uh, made a song called Mr. Tembo about an elephant. It got me curious. Have you heard the song at all? I haven't. Now, a lot of people think, you know, because of the, the name Tembo, it, it, it's it's related. Tembo means elephant in Swahili. So it's, it's, it's actually us not being very original with the name. But um, <laughs> Tembo will pop up all the time because that, that means elephant. So here I'm hitting those reflections. And you'll see I'm letting some of them bleed a little bit, like it's really catching light. And uh, speaking of uh, Tembo as well, as regards uh, your Tembo film, is anything going to become of that? The art of it is beautiful. Well, thank you for that. Um, but no, I don't think anything's going to happen. It, it was bought by a, a company in China um, that had an investment in the movie. And when our company went bankrupt... Uh, they bought it out of bankruptcy so that they would have the asset so it wouldn't be a black mark on their books. But they don't really have any plans on actually making it, unfortunately. Are stuffed animals good to study? No. They're good to study for stuffed animals. But if you're looking for, for anatomy, no, you don't use stuffed animals. Unless you mean taxidermy. <laughs> I think you've obviously meant taxidermy. I'm being an idiot. I thought you meant like teddy bears. What an idiot. I'm an idiot. <laughs> That's so embarrassing. No, no, don't don't look at teddy bears. Such an idiot. <laughs> uh but um yeah, I mean good good taxidermy is definitely I I I was just at the Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C., and I did a lot of drawing there. So, yes, taxidermy is good to study, if it's good, if it's well done. It, it should never be a substitute, though. That, you know, live, live animals are always, are always preferred, obviously. And, you know, a lot of people will go to taxidermy to animals because they stand still. <laughs> but... You know, you're you're at the mercy of the person that mounted those animals, and you know it's sometimes they're not accurate. Now, honestly, I I personally think the only way like a toy stuffed animal <laughs> animal can be useful is for lighting. And that's pretty much it, like yeah. studying light off of us. Whatever. <laughs> that's my opinion. <laughs> But uh, what's your uh, favorite short animated film this year? Oh, it's got it's uh, for sure. It's uh, Deer Basketball. I'm, I'm oh, biased, I know, but yeah. I love Deer Basketball. Uh, Glenn Keane was the animator of it. Glenn is my mentor. He taught me animation when I was 20 years old, and uh, and to me, he's one of the most brilliant animators alive. And uh, I just love everything he does. And, uh, and I think if you haven't seen Deer Basketball, you should. It's great. So here you can see I'm kind of working out these reflections. Is someone making a, wise, a wisecrack about the, the stuffed animals? Yeah, so, so he said, I thought teddy bears as well laugh, laughed out loud. What time we got? 2.05. All right. I actually have to be on a plane in about four hours. So I think I'm good so far. But I'm going to have to quit here in a little bit. But I wanted to show you guys 
this because I want you to see how easy it is to create convincing water with these brushes. And here I'm, like I said, I'm just kind of going in. Have you ever uh, sculpted before? I have sculpted. It's been a long time and I do miss it. And yes, I'd like to do it again because I get that question a lot. Um, and uh, I think I might, you know, I might, I might do it again. Have you ever been to Scotland? I haven't, and I want to go so bad. Um, I've only been to the UK once, and that was in London. And I was only there for two days. If you go, please take me with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so right now I'm just, I'm kind of adding little, little, little details like you would get, you know, little spots. Maybe there's some bubbles or little Ill irregularities in the water that will cause little sparkles like I'm drawing now. You know, that's what, that that naturally happens. There. See how natural this starts to feel? All by using these little fake brushes. Little fake water brushes. Am I cheating? Yes, it's a cheat, but it gives you good results. And for those of you that struggle with painting water, this is a good, it's a good substitute. Oh, somebody else mentioned about the, uh, the stuffed animal thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> I thought you meant teddy bears too. I was hot. I have my mom with laughter. <laughs> <laughs> but was, when we answer about Scotland, I, I just started thinking, like, if we ever do go to Scotland, we go in an elevator, we got to reenact that one one joke. <laughs> yeah. The voice recognition. Voice recognition technology in a lift in <laughs> Scotland. <laughs> yeah, but in mind. There we go. So I'm getting there. Ooh. Somebody said, uh, if you come to Scotland, I'll give you a tour of the glens. Oh, that'd be awesome. That'd be beautiful. I'll take you up on it. All right. So here, just, tr just finishing this off. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> So we, so we recognize the um, the the joke. So we wrote eleven. Eleven. <laughs> eleven. <laughs> eleven. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there, it took a little while, but not. Look at this. So you can see we got some cool water reflections. Now what I want to do is I want to come in. I'm going to go underneath, I'm going to go under that, I'm going to go on top of here, I'm going to set it to multiply, <laughs> let's see, I want to try something, I'm going to go a little darker, just want to see, let's go back up to our brushes, I want to emphasize some of these darker planes a little bit more, so I'm going to grab that this brush here and I'm just I've got it on its own layer so it's not going to hurt anything I've got it set to multiply I just want to get some darker there oh shoot there we go what animation exercises would you recommend for a young artist just doing it just you know just get in there and do it um, it's there we go I mean uh, I don't like that I want to keep it in the foreground. You know, the best the best thing you can do for animation as a young artist is to do, try to strive to do a acting. And, it, you know, remember, animation is not the art of moving things around. You, you guys will hear me say this all the time. It's the art of bringing something to life. And so that's the key. You want to be honest with your animation and bring it to life. You know, that's one of the, let me jump down to the bear. Um, animation that I was doing. Yes, this is broad animation and he's he's moving all over the place, but my key, my, the goal here was to make him feel alive. I wanted to give him personality. And so uh, by doing, by thinking of a personality, by thinking, you know, one of the things I was thinking about is just a happy dog playing in that first snow. And so by doing that, I was able to attach, you know, who this guy might be and get in there and, and, and 
use that as my as my basis for for the animation you want to get personality you want to get life into it you don't want to just move stuff you want to move things with a purpose for a purpose so that's the best thing i can you know best piece of advice i can give you you know if you're a young animator put honesty in your work you know that honesty comes from being honest with who these characters are all right so there's that i added a little bit of darkness in there which feels pretty good so I'm going to uh, let's go ahead and let's see here. I think we're gonna have we'll still have a couple of little sparklies, a couple of little sparklies over here. I'm gonna come over here. Feels a little bit like we're missing a few areas over here. A couple of these should we should catch some of these should catch a little bit of light it dies it kind of fades off a little too quickly you've gotten quiet over there Dustin uh, why did you uh, leave from Disney um, well that's a tough question that's a it's a personal question um, I've talked about it before so I can I can talk about it again but I had a I had some some major personal things that happened to me that it changed my goals in my life. The biggest thing was, you know, Dustin's mother, my wife, um, she had breast cancer, and um, and in 2007 uh, she lost her battle and she passed away, and uh, it destroyed our family, and we had a hard time dealing with it. Dustin and I and his sister and and um, and it was tough. And, you know, I, I lost uh, a, a, a woman that, you know, meant the world to me. We were together for 20 years and, um, and you know, it's, it's a hard thing to recover from. <clears throat> and so um, when I went back to work, I had a really hard time uh, getting back into making movies. It didn't really matter to me anymore. And, uh, and, I, and I just, and I was coping with it in the wrong way too, you know, plotted, you know, I just wasn't coping well. And so, uh, eventually because I wasn't, I wasn't doing what I needed to be doing. I was taken off the movie I was directing, you know, straight up. I just, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't pulling my weight. I just wasn't, my heart wasn't in it anymore. And so when I was taken off, when John, it was John Lasseter, when he took me off the film, that's when I realized, you know, what, I need to make a change. And so, uh, I quit. Uh, I was at Disney for 21 years and in that moment I knew I needed to change things up I needed to find my my family again my son my daughter I needed to find myself I needed to start over you know there were two things that in my life up to that point that really kind of defined me one was my my family which I was losing and the other one was my job which I was losing so I needed to start over I needed to find myself and so that's uh, I decided to quit and and start over and so that's what I did. So there you go. I hope I didn't make you feel too uncomfortable, but that's why I left Disney. Uh, it was, uh, and it was, to be honest with you, it's, it, I, and I talk about this a lot when I go on the road, uh, when I talk about my career. And one of the things that's interesting to me is that right now, doing what I'm doing from a creative standpoint, I'm happier than I've ever been. Yes, I've been through some horrible things emotionally over the last 15 years, 10 years. Um, but, um, you know, life goes on and you have to, you have to fight even, you know, there's might be days, you know, when my wife passed away, when Karen passed away, there were days that I didn't think I could, I could get out of bed where I didn't want to live anymore. I wanted to go to sleep and not wake up, but that doesn't happen. You have to keep, you have to keep pushing. And, uh, and the irony is, is that right now, because I've pushed through, I'm happier than I've ever been creatively. I'm happier now creatively than I was when I was at Disney. And the irony of it is, is that it, it, my, my wife had to pass away to send me into a direction that I never would have gone otherwise. And that's a really weird thing to think about. It's really different. Um, you know, I love being able to talk to the world in this way, talk to you guys and give advice and, and hopefully maybe a little bit of inspiration and to show you that, you know, if a guy like me can make it, anybody can make it. And, um, and it's, you know, that, 
that to me is is that's a real gift and I never would have been doing it otherwise had I not gone through this this horrible gauntlet of tragedies in my life um, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you and like I said I'm, I'm really I'm honestly happier than I really have, have ever been and uh, and it's because of that so you know for those of you that are going through a hard time just know that that those times will pass you have to fight you have to get through it there's going to be dark nights when you don't want to wake up the next day where you don't want to live anymore and uh, but you have to fight that and you got to keep going because I, I know I've been there and it's uh, it's tough so that's why I left Disney <laughs> so, sorry for the heavy discussion but there you go so there we go so now I've got all the I've got the reflections on the water that feels pretty good to me so now what I want to do is I'm going to save this file save as would you return water. to Disney? Uh, you know what? I might return to Disney if if there was something pulling me back. But, you know, to be honest with you, there's nothing. I love what I'm doing now. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I want to make films. And I, I don't need to make feature films. I just want to make films. And I'm making Snow Bear, and we're doing it our own way. And we're doing, you know, I love the control that we have. And uh, working with Nick and Dustin and... And Steve, you know, on our team, and uh, I just I love it. So what I'm what I'm doing here, so I got these sparkle brushes that I made for the water, and I'm just gonna go in. I know it's kind of cheesy. Let me knock this all the way up. I just want to see what this looks like. Yeah, I'm not liking those. They're too big. I like them, but they're too big. I'm gonna come in here and. There we go. That's kind of interesting. Now, I'm going to flatten this. What do you think the advantages of CG animation flat. are? And what do you think the advantages of 2D animation are? Well, it, it, I don't know if you call them advantages. There's just differences. You know, I don't know that, that I would call them advantages um, or disadvantages. You know, there's something about that handmade quality that you get in 2D animation. It's literally made by hand. I embrace the flickery line and the sketchiness and all that. That's what tells me it's handmade and it's it's got soul. Um, not to say that 3D animation doesn't have soul, but there's something less less slick about 2d that i really like um but at the same time 3d can give you i think it opens up a lot more opportunities for people that necessarily don't know how to draw but they can animate or they can model or they can do whatever and it, so i think it opens up more career paths for people that don't necessarily do what i'm doing uh so that's a that's cool um but there's i mean there's the list goes on and on and on and plus the cg um animation each movie they're introducing a new engine or new tech so yeah it's almost like demonstrating what the future is holding so far like with milana you wouldn't stop talking about the the water yeah the effects from that and then tangled with the way they handled the the hair yeah like there, there's always something technologically advanced going on in each movie while like you said in the in the traditional 2D animation, it has more soul to it than than any real. Yeah, but once again, take. I think soul might be the wrong. You can see the artist's handiwork a little right. bit better. That's right. That's fine. Yeah. So I'm going to go into color dodge. I'm going to set my brush blend mode to color dodge. I brought the opacity way down to nine percent, and I've got my airbrush, and I'm going to come over here, and I want to get nice, warm, bright. Color. Now watch. I'm going to come in here. This is where I want to really burn in some of that sparkly. You know, you've been out on the water and it just blinds you. What are your thoughts on a live action Lion King coming next year? I'm excited. You know, I like what Disney is doing. I like uh, John Favreau's directing style. I like what he does. I always call him. I call him Brett. Brett Favre. <laughs> um, 
yeah, I th I'm, I'm excited about it. I want to see, I want to see what they do with it. So here I am, hitting some of these really bright sparklies, sparklies. It's a sparkly. Would you consider it more important to push towards 2D animation to understand volumes, perspectives, and whatnot in uh, in prospect to go towards 3D animation? Um. You well, know, I don't know how important that is because, you know, in 3D animation, you don't have to worry about the volumes. So, you know, it's nice to understand, you know, from a 2D standpoint, what it takes to follow your volumes. But I don't know that it's completely necessary. So there's, there's those reflections right there. You know, get that sun kind of low. I'm going to brighten up some of this on this side. Do you think it's possible to make a full clean uh, to make full cleanup lines and retain as much possible from the rough sketch, possibly even more than the rough sketch ever could? Say that one more time. Do you think it's possible to make it to make full cleanup lines and retain as much as possible from uh, the rough sketch, possibly even more than the rough sketch itself ever could? Uh, that's a tough one. I don't. I don't. I'm. I don't know about that. You know, the rough sketch, there's something about, you know, when, when you, this happens, it might, you know, there, I've got that sun nice and bright there. When the, um, you know, more often than not, when you go from that rough sketch into the, into the cleanup line, it starts to lose, it loses some of its soul. Um, but, you know, never say never. I mean, I've, you know, maybe, maybe so. There we go. I wanted it nice and bright back there. What did you think about the new Jungle Book? I was kind of disappointed. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, I, I, I really, I wasn't disappointed at all. I really enjoyed it. I had a good time with it. There we go. What would you think about a live action Brother Bear? I think that would be cool. I think actually, I think it really lends itself to live action. Um, the movie, unfortunately, you know, just to be honest with ourselves, the movie wasn't popular enough to warrant doing a live action version of it. But I really do think it really lends itself to a live action retelling. There we go. So there's water. Um, done with those water brushes. It's kind of fun. And you could put a ship in there. We could put a, a sea monster in there. We'd flop it. Yeah. It's kind of, that's kind of cool. I, I probably would, now that I'm looking at it like this, I might crop it a little bit. That feels a little better. What are your thoughts and uh, ideas on abstract backgrounds versus natural backgrounds? Basically, like a solid color, solid color with uh, lighting and brush effects versus physical detailed painting style. It just, it depends on the art direction. If it works for the art direction, that's great. If it does, I mean, if you look at some of the like uh, what's opera doc, um, where Bugs Bunny is singing opera and you got Elmer Fudd and all that, those are all really abstract beautiful back or they were really abstract ba backgrounds but then i mean you look at i don't know look at bambi look at pinocchio it just really depends on the art direction the story you're trying to tell i mean anything can work for anything you just have to you just have to have thought that goes into it you know abstract backgrounds just to be abstract with no thought behind it yeah there's a problem with that or realistic backgrounds with no thought behind it just be just to be realistic there's a problem with that and all that world has to be well thought out and um, at the end of the day, it needs to it needs to transport transport the viewer to someplace new to get an idea across, to do something, to to change that viewer's point of view. And if you're watching it and you're being taken out of the experience because the art direction isn't right, then you failed. So it really just comes down to what's the right art direction. Uh, how would you uh, animate water, either waves or like rivers? Um, you know, it really comes, I can't, I can't sit here and say, this is how you do it. It's, there's a lot more to it, but you do need to do a lot of observing of those natural elements. And that's something that our effects animators always did at the studio. They would go out and they'd have, they'd have video of water, you know, different types of waves, different types of ripples from flames of rain of, of, you know, explosions, all kinds of stuff. And they would study that there's, you know, it's the study of physics. You need to understand why things are doing, you know, what they're doing. You need to understand um, planes and, and shapes and how shapes morph and, and all of that. And so it, it, it takes a lot of study. Not really a question, but more of a comment. But you strike me as a man who likes Africa by Toto. 
<laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my jam. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put a uh, just real quick. I've got a little bit of time. Uh, what is it? Two twenty-five. I just want to show you some of these other brushes real quick without rendering. What does your sketching brush look like? My sketching brush? Yeah. My sketching brush looks like this. Your sketching brush. This is my sketching brush. It's a very simple... Whoops. What am I doing here? There's that. Oh, it's on Color Dodge. I don't want Color Dodge. I want Normal. I'm going to set that up there. This is my sketching brush. So you can see it's got a texture to it. I blow that up even more so you can see the texture I really like this brush this is one that I made and if you sign up for my newsletter on my website at creatureartteacher.com um, you'll get this brush for free and that's the other thing for too free? If, for free <laughs> if you came in late we're doing a sale on all my brushes um, there's 50% off uh, but if you put in the promo code 50% YouTube, off holy cow I think it's YouTube stream yeah, if you put in the promo code uh, YouTube stream, um, then you'll get an extra 10% off. So that's 60% off. Uh, like these water brushes that I was just showing you guys. Um, but I've got foliage brushes and cloud brushes and debris brushes and all kinds of fun stuff. But real quick, I want to show you some of these other uh, water effects. These are kind of fun because they create... I could, you, know, you could go in and create like these layers of waves coming in. Question. Uh, Question. Yes. Any thoughts on doing uh, study on uh, studying drawings uh, from masters like uh, Milt Call to improve uh, drawing other than studying anatomy drawing from life? Uh, you know what? Milt Call studied from life. That's how Milt Call became Milt Call. So it's almost like making a copy of a copy. Um, you can look at Milt Call to be inspired, but I'd still it's important to go back to the source, which is figure drawing, real world anatomy, in order to, to hone your skills. Um, you don't want to look at somebody else, uh, their work, that did the same thing. You're, you're skipping a beat. But like I said, it's, it is, it's okay to, to be inspired by them and, and mimic them and emulate them. Here's some more, of the, more wa different water effects. Um, but remember, you, know, you want to go back to the source. Milk Call was an avid figure drawer. He was there all the time. Here's some more water uh, effects. Do you know if the brushes work in Krita? Uh, Krita? I don't. I, I don't know. That's a question for Nick. Nick, <laughs> come with me, Bob. Nick. <laughs> some more. The straight up, you know, water textures. You can use this as. There we go. So I just want to show you some of these textures that um, you can you can use. Um, they're a lot of fun. This any, one this one works really good. Any plans on a visit to uh, Israel? I'd, I'd be happy to show you guys around. Uh, you know what? I don't have plans on a visit to Israel, but I would love to go. I would love to go. So there's that. I'll shrink it down so I can go recede into the background. Um, I'm going to be heading off to China. Um, Oh, the China. whole month of China, <laughs> the whole month of March. So I'll be in China, Singapore, um, uh, South Korea, and uh, Myanmar. Uh, so that's going to be the whole month of March. But then we'll be back, and we'll be back on uh, doing all of this. Check this one out. This is this has got a lot of a lot of ripple to it. We ever do uh, scale brushes of uh, reptiles and birds? I have not, but I want to. I want to do reptile skin. There's some more water. Check that out. Fun, huh? Cool stuff. I'll keep pulling up some more. But if you do, if you play with your blend modes, more sparkles. You know, you know once again, if you know, you can go bright with it. And we can go, let's set it to color dodge and now we've got sparkly sparkles on the water you know 
really cool effects. This is what I love about Photoshop is that ability to go in and um, and create something new. You know, I, I like I like I like coming up with an, a problem. You know, I need I need this brush to paint X, whatever it might be, and figuring it out like water. You know, I really enjoyed creating these brushes, figuring out okay, this is what Photoshop can do, and I can create these patterns. Let's see if we can come up with something that that will help. Um, kind of somebody that might struggle with painting water, all they have to do is you know create these brushes and or use these brushes, and all of a sudden they've got a they've got a head up. And uh, that's what I want people to do. You might not be able to draw, but I want you to be able to still create and have fun. And so that's what I'm trying to do with some of these brushes. And if you do draw, I want you to have these brushes so that you've got a little bit of a shortcut. You know, it, it saves time. There we go. More water. Are these uh, brushes available on the Ultimate Pack? Uh, yes. I'm going to say yes with a question mark. Which Ask means Nick. Me. <laughs> Which means Nick. <laughs> Anytime you do that, that tone of voice like, yes, in translation it means Nick. Nick. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, what's your thoughts on using uh, textures and multiplying layers versus using a texture brush? I do both. I do both. So it just re it depends on what the job needs. Here's some more water. Getting bigger and bigger. Come bring stuff into the foreground. See that? Boom. Water. Bada bing. Bada boom. You can have some fun with these. Some of them get flatter and flatter. This one's a lot of fun. Just work your way down. You got a nice. See there? Water. You want to do a nice little lake scene? You know, that's what I was thinking about when I was creating these. Look at this one. This one's really flattened out. And as I get closer and closer to the bottom, I'm increasing the size. So we get, see that? It's like you're sitting on the edge of a lake, looking across the lake, and you've got these little ripples coming in. And we did that in 10 seconds. And some of them are just really random. You know, this is, you can do all kinds of stuff. It doesn't have to be just water. But this, you know, you can use this to go in and, and hit little highlights. You know, if I want to go bright with it, I can go in and hit hit some little highlights. Like I could have used this for for the reflection, for, for the sparkles on, you know, underneath here. You know, I could come in there and hit that. So it's kind of fun. Uh, you've been awfully quiet. Are there any more questions? Or are you just are you just skipping people? I'm. Do you use Procreate? Yeah, I use Procreate. Uh, I use Procreate uh, on my iPad Pro. Uh, I just don't use it as much because I'm I'm always on I'm always on this and to be honest with you if I'm not on my Cintiq if I'm away from my desk I tend to use regular pencil and paper pen brush pen whatever I tend to draw more traditionally um, I don't like getting outdoors and struggling to see the screen it just bugs me uh, so um, if I'm not at my desk I'm usually outdoors so I, I bring you know traditional materials I've even got water splatters so if you want to do spray. You know, here's ocean spray coming up. What did it take for you to make your own studio? Uh, perseverance. <laughs> perseverance. It took, yeah, it took a lot of perseverance, and it took a savings account. I had money saved, so I could, you know, you don't you don't make money right away, and so uh, I had money saved up from over the years, and we decided to do this, and, uh, and so this is how we make our living now, and it takes time, and it's still growing. The business is still growing, and and. Uh, but thanks to you guys, um, you know, your support and, and everything you guys have done, it's been fantastic and, uh, we're just growing and I, like I said, I'm happier now than I've ever been and we're just going to keep hopefully just flooding you guys with more content and, and material and, you know, I'm hoping that by the time I die, I've gotten rid of all the information I have in my brain and I've gotten it out into, into the world and hopefully somebody else is taking it to the next level. So that's my goal with all of this. So, uh, so there's that.
So that, I think that's a good question to end on. So it's it's uh, we've been at it for about an hour and a half. But um, I know we were kind of all over the place. But uh, I just, like I said, I wanted you to see some of the stuff that you can do with uh, these brushes. They're a lot of fun. So go on over to the website and check them out. Um, and uh, uh, have fun with them. They're cheap, you know. So just, you know, grab them and, and just experiment and have a lot of fun. If you decide not to, you know, do some do some other digital painting. Go out and do some, some traditional painting. Uh, but either way, get out and do some creating and put some beauty back into the world. Uh, be nice to somebody, you know, make somebody else's life better. And, uh, um, and thanks for listening to me today. It was, it was a fun one. You got any more on there? Uh, I actually one got one more. Uh, do you have a brush that simulates water coming towards the viewer? Uh, water coming towards the viewer. I don't, I've got, I just showed you what I have, which are like ripples and things like that. But that's a good challenge. I think I might try to make a brush that can do that. Challenge accepted. A challenge accepted. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, thanks a lot, you guys. I've got to go catch a plane because I'm flying up to Virginia. And uh, I will catch you next week. Um, on Tuesday, I'll be over on Facebook Live uh, at 1 o'clock Eastern, just like I always am. And then on Thursday, same thing, back here again. And we'll do some painting. And maybe, well, I think we, we might have... Uh, snow bear um we might be painting snow bear getting a color in there so maybe we'll do a little bit of that show you what how we do that but anyway thanks a lot for showing up and once again check out the website creatureartteacher.com i'll see you here next week i'll see you uh right here on thursday tuesday on facebook and um i'm gonna go by my awkward goodbye i gotta click on obs awkward <laughs> awkward <laughs> <laughs> but thanks you guys i had a lot of fun and i will talk to you next week dustin Yep. Cowboy. Bye. Cowboy Beep Bop. Cowboy Beep